Yo, yo, Josh, yo. Today, I got the newest transition. You guys are gonna love it. It's so f***ing rad. What makes this transition so cool is you don't have to do any After Effects or Premiere. It's, it's, I'm, let me just show you. Wow, okay, you can only do this three rotations before things start getting a little a loopy. So when would you actually use this type of transition? You could use it for your travel videos. If you're trying to get through a bunch of locations really quickly on your timeline, you want to show a transition of time and space. Or if you want to get to someplace really quickly, like this. Right, and now we're in the snow. I'm in freaking Montreal, freezing my ass off. This effect worked too good. <laughs> I'm from Los Angeles. We don't really do snow well. In fact, I'm so terrible at this. Check out these shoes that I got. Look at this. Italian leather boots. We're up here filming for the show I work for. I'm a camera guy for CNBC, Secret Lives of the Super Rich. You guys should check it out. We were filming a bunch of Lamborghinis up here racing. Anyway, the best part about this transition is it's all done in camera. It's what's called a practical effect. So it's not one of those stupid luma fades or the zoom out transitions that you have to do in Adobe After Effects. And most of the time when you're doing regular transitions in your computer and you're not really thinking, you're just like, oh, what's the cool thing to get me from point A to point B and have it be fresh and interesting, right? Well, with practicals, it forces you to think about story, which is way more interesting than just being cool and stylish. I first saw this transition in the promo for Atlanta. They did it on a much bigger budget. They did it with a person in it. The second best thing about this transition is that if you have a camera, chances are you have a tripod. So you have almost everything that you need in order to pull it off. The only other item is a little cheese plate and a double-sided quarter-inch threaded screw. So we got a tripod. I took the head off to make it easier. Get these little tripod feet so you can actually just screw right back in it now you'll obviously have to check what tripod you have this is the cheapo me photo i bought it for like 150 bucks next you want to buy a cheese plate for 10 bucks i left the link in the description down below your little camera here this is a sony fdr x3000 it's my gopro killer we're gonna pop this screw right down the middle of the cheese plate and pop it right in to the tripod. Now we're gonna lift this little tab up here so that it can extend all the way. And that's it, you're done. So the higher you go up on this thing, the less steady it's gonna be. You basically wanna stabilize all the axes except for the one that you're hinging on. It'll take a little bit of finesse, but it's really not gonna take you long to figure it out. I see some people coming. Let's see if we can get a dynamic movement shot. I'm gonna change the frame rate at 120p. Let's see if it works. You speak English? Do you think I could film you guys walking by real fast? Thank you. That's super cool. So it's starting to snow. <laughs> so let's take this inside and I'll show you guys how to do it on the computer. It's so awesome, yet also very, very jarring, and there's the chance of overdoing it. I say three, but maybe even less, maybe like two. Anyway, let's jump into it. So I normally when I do this, I do it a couple of times. That way, by the third or fourth time, I get really, really smooth. So I went ahead and I selected the smoothest part of the transition here. And now we're gonna do a little speed ramping. Right click, time remapping, hit speed. We're gonna find the center spot and put a keyframe. And we're gonna go to a little bit past center and find another keyframe. All of these were shot at 29 frames. So we're gonna slow it down to 80%. If you're editing on a 23.976 time frame, you can actually slow down your 29 frame footage to 80%. So that's what we're gonna do. So let's do the next one, time remapping, speed. 
We're gonna find the center just a little bit before. Put a keyframe a little bit after. Put a keyframe. Boost this up to a thousand. Boost that up to a thousand. We'll take this down to eighty. Now I'm already shooting this at 120 frames per second, but it conformed that 120 frames per second to 29 frames per second and stretched it out. And they did it did that already in camera. So that's what we're working with here. Do this for this one as well. This one's super dope. This one really emphasizes the action part that I thought would be really rad. The last little bit, let's grab some sound effects, some whipping, wishing. I found these little whips from Epidemic Sounds. They have a whole library full of sound effects, which are pretty dope. Let's just find the right one. On this last one, you'll notice I actually broke the plane. Instead of going this way, we went this way. But it works just the same. You're actually match framing to the motion. So the speed and the arc is what you're matching to. I think this is one of those fad transitions that can add a lot of flavor if you do it sparingly. Too much, it becomes nauseating. All right, that's looking good. Dude, that looks great to me. I have no idea what to call this transition. I'm kind of leaning on spin through earth. What do you guys think? If you have a better name for this, post it in the comments below. I will pick a winner next week and I will send you out a free cheese plate that you can use to mount on your tripod. If you guys want more information on this, find my Facebook page at Make Art Later. Blow me up on Instagram, make period art period now. Anyway, this is Josh Joe saying thank you very much. Stay creative. Now go spin through Earth.